everybody, Steve here, back again, Sunday morning, and I'm going to be a cooking fool today. So the plan is to make some, as you can see from the title here, uh, butternut squash soup in a crock pot. So this one, this one's actually a combination of cooking it in a slow cooker and then and then getting it in the blender to chop it up into like soup. So looking forward to this. I found this recipe is pretty easy, super easy. And uh, and we'll flip the camera around. We'll get started. Be right back. All right, back again. Hope you guys can hear me okay. Like I said, I, I did away with the wireless mic. I broke it, actually. It's what happened. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so uh, all the ingredients and directions are down below. Uh, and on your way down there, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Hit that, the thumbs up. And uh, you know what? Subscribe if you haven't. Come join the family here. So... Butternut squash, what would butternut squash soup be without butternut squash, right? So this is one uh, butternut squash. Um, I saw them in the grocery store. It's kind of what gave me this idea. So I saw them in the, uh, the grocery store. I was like, oh, man, you know, normally I, I cook butternut squash in the in the oven or microwave and heat it up and then scoop it out. It's kind of like mashed potatoes or something that's uh, with, with some butter and brown sugar. That's normally the way I eat butternut squash. Uh so I saw this recipe and I'm like, hmm, I'm gonna give this a try. So peeled, and then we're just gonna just chop it up. So all we're just cutting it up into chunks because, like I said, I just need them small enough to to cook through. And because we're gonna cook them for three to four hours on high. And the idea is to get this butternut squash soft enough and all the other ingredients soft enough that it'll go and liquefy in the blender. All right, so chopping it up like that. I'm going to chop up all my butternut squash. <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to put in are two apples. Now, these are Juliet apples. These are uh, French apples I got at the car for. I'm intrigued by it. I'm like, hmm, French apples. That's got to be good. So... You're going to core these, All right? Core them. I peeled and cored, and then, uh, and just, again, cut them up just like you did the butternut squash. And there's no need to mince it, but again, the, the thinner the pieces, the quicker they'll cook. And I'm going to do two apples like this. You could use some, probably something a little sweeter. Now, this apple smells pretty sweet. I've never had a Juliet apple. Let me try this. Mmm. Oh, man, that's delicious. Really sweet apple. I've got one onion, uh, 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 onion, Bella, that I've chopped up. Two cloves of garlic. I want to peeled and chop four, four large carrots. Sorry about all the clickety clacking this board. So I got some exciting news. I was talking to Nathan, and you, you, those of you that have seen the videos know Nathan's a pretty good cook. Well, I will say this, and I'm I'm not a big enough man to admit it that he's a uh, he's better at grilling than I am. He's he's got that down, man. He's he's uh, he's really good at it. So I, I've asked him because um, eventually. You know, the plan one day is to have a farm. And Nathan is all excited about coming back. And that was always kind of something we talked about, dreamed about. But as, as we get older here, it's, it looks like it might, might be reality. Him coming back, working on the farm in between, you know, his job. One day he's talking about maybe trying to get on with the airlines or something as a pilot. But working on the farm with me. And uh, the idea to, was to do videos together. So I'm going to try that out a little bit. Now he, he smoked up some ribs. He's got a big barrel smoker. And Nathan's a good instructor, too. Uh, I've, I've made a couple of videos with him. He's, he's good. And uh, I've asked him. So I'm, I'm, I'm look for those in the future here. Uh, I'm going to make some videos with him. Just him. And I'll, I'll uh, edit them up and provide some my uh, notes on the bottom 
<laughs> but I'm excited to see what uh, what he's going to do. So I'll, we'll add this to the to the thing, and that's you know that's a, the, a lot of his curiosity and willingness to try stuff was a lot like mom. I think he got a lot of that from her, and uh, uh, inquisitive guy he is. So it, I think that that fits kind of right in the spirit of the channel too. Um, so. Uh, anyway, as you saw, I was chopping up four uh, stalks of celery as well. And uh, so let me finish chopping this up, and then we'll start adding this and adding our other ingredients. So stand by one. All right, back again. So everything's cut up and put in here. I've got it on high. On high. Like I said, I'm going to cook it for three hours. Next, I'm going to add my spices and not much spice to it. So salt and pepper, I'm going to go with about a teaspoon each. You can do that to taste, obviously. Um, and I'm kind of with experience with the crock pot. It's it's better to to typically go a little easier on the salt because as it cooked water cooks out, it condenses and it'll get more and more salty. So if you if you put enough, it as it cooks down, it'll end up being too much. So it's better to if all else fails to add it at the end. And I'm going to go with one teaspoon of nutmeg so which is interesting mmm smells good now all that goes in and then to that for my liquid I'm gonna go with some vegetable broth and four cups or one box that's usually what this comes. This is a, a liter. Put that in. Of course, as this cooks, all that liquid in the vegetables, especially celery. Celery really cooks out liquid out of it. But what we're looking for is to soften these vegetables and because we're going to put it in the blender, blend it up into the soup. Now with this, I'm planning to make some sourdough bread. I'll take take another crack at it. I haven't had too much luck with the sourdough bread, honestly. But I've been having my my sourdough has been going for a while. Now it's about two months old. About time it had a name. Looking for names for my sourdough. If you got any suggestions, just leave them in the comments below. Um, and I'm gonna so just kind of mix this around a little bit. Kind of spread all the stuff evenly around. Make sure all the spices and everything else kind of get mixed in here. And oh, jailbreak. It's all right. Five second rule. All right. Pat this down in there. Cover the top. And now, big thing with crock pot, as you, as you know, every time you take that top off of there, it's it's like almost like starting from scratch. Almost, it'll take it a while to warm back up again. So you don't want to be lifting the top up too much. So got this on here. Now, what I'm looking for are three to four hours. All the, everything should be squishy so that it'll, it'll blend up nice. So we'll be checked back here in three to four hours and uh, we'll see uh, and we'll take the next step. So stand by one. All right, so it's been a little while. Put this on about 10 or so, 10.30 and then uh, I, I had it on high until about two and then I, uh, I turned it down to, I've got it down to warm now because I just wasn't ready to make this yet. So I've got my blender going here. Can I see that's an in picture? Yeah. Okay, good. And um, I uh, get the light squared away there. Sorry about the lighting here. So I'm trying to get it all in picture here. So what I'm all I'm going to do is, and this smells amazing by the way, is scoop some of this in here and then Turn the blender on, so I'm going to make sure I get all the liquid too. You know what? I just want to make a mess here. Let me just get this right over it here. 
So I'm looking for this stuff to be pretty mushy so that it'll liquefy, and it is. And I'm gonna have to do, obviously, do a couple of batches. Now, if you've got a Vitamix or something like that, make sure I get plenty of liquid here. You're not gonna have any problem. I'm gonna try to start with a smaller batch here and see how this works. It's in, lock it in. Make sure I put the top on it. All right, you see that okay? All right, let's turn this on. like soup and pour some of this in here that looks like butternut squash soup there it is let me flip this around and try it I'll be right back all right I've let it cool down a little bit <laughs> I put a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese on the top so place where I got this recipe that's what the person said they did so uh, it's still hot <laughs> Try to, try to let it cool down a little bit. Um, smells wonderful, and it's it's uh, it, it, it took on a little bit of a more of a greenish hue, I guess, with the celery in it. Um, cooking, uh, maybe with the apples oxidizing a little bit, maybe. I don't, I don't know, but uh, it doesn't have that butternut squash orange color to it. So anyway, here we go. Try this. Ooh. Oh, that's tasty. Now I'm looking forward. You just get a little bit of taste of it now because uh, I'm going to have this with some sourdough bread that I'm, I'm baking up now. I'm, I'm letting the dough rise, so that video is coming afterwards. Another attempt at sourdough bread. Oh, that's tasty and healthy and good. Oh, that's good. Very nice. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a try. It's pretty easy and it's pretty tasty. So all you need is a slow cooker and a blender and all the ingredients. All that's down below and the directions and everything else. And if that'll be all, we'll see you next time. Take care.